Hello folks, it's a I80386SX production. It's another vintage computer mess around video. As you can see, this is a classic Compaq LTE light. This is a 425E. And as you can see, I only have the power. And I get my finger out of the way. There's a phone cable connected to a modem. Now, a little bit of history lesson here. Most of the Compaq LTE light series, in the beginning, the 20 and the 25s, that slot was normally blank. In the later, basically anything that came with this trackball, that slot had a modem in it. Very rarely do you see a second serial port, but the option does exist. I, I see these modems all the time, but I've never actually seen one work, so just for giggles, we'll get some dial-up going on this thing and see if we can get this thing online. Now, other than installing the modem and installing some form of Internet Explorer, I've done absolutely nothing with this machine. It connected. well <laughs> all right so we got to tell where the files are we're off to a great start now i had to get a little creative because the disk drive on this machine is dead just probably like 95 percent of these computers so i had to take the hard drive out of this machine put it in another machine Copy Internet Explorer, copy Windows 95, set up, and all that fun stuff. You can tell I have a second one of these below, and that's my 25E, but it was really struggling to do much of anything, so I'm going to take my chances on a 486. Vacation. Hmm. I wonder if we can get out of that, because I don't need to do actually, I actually don't need to do any of this whatsoever. Try this again. Let's try manual. Like using my phone line. I don't need any of that crap for You go look on my other videos, I did make a video for setting up a dial-up server within your own house. According to Doge Systems, uh, a document put together by them. Now a little rant about Linux. Oh, it's going to make me type in an area code, but I don't need the area code. But Anywho, so I built a dial-up server using a Linux box and for those that are getting started in this field in the IT field and really anything of serious value you will want to learn Linux you don't have to like it but you should learn it and at least have understand the basics you will open up so many doors in your life and all my good CIOs IT directors even uh, the teachers or instructors at the college, all the good ones said the same thing, learn Linux. Well, anywho, enough about that. We'll just go next. And I am just going to put in Google's DNS servers. And we shall see what we have. Nothing. Let's try internet again. And just for those that are watching out there, I went up to Internet Explorer 3.02. Internet Explorer 1 and 2 are absolutely useless. 
and I'm they literally just take up space but anywho we will try it that made no configurations whatsoever on the modem itself it's a good start Okay, that's a really good start. We'll see if it gets beyond that. And we are connected at 9,600 uh, baud. And we are sorry. I am too. Well, it's trying to apologize to us. Let's see what the icon on the lower right hand side tells us. Well, it tells you your connection speed and how many bytes were sent and received. Now, one thing to note, if your LTE light detects this as a standard modem, not the compact enhanced 9600 data fax, whatever, you will have to manually assign your baud rate down to 9600 if you're using the dial-up setup that I have. Otherwise, you'll, it won't actually go anywhere. It'll, you'll get the noises, but that's about it. And this is actually trying to load something. I want to see, I'll download a file on my local server. I just set up a quick IIS server and I've been trans transferring files that way. Oh, and it's complaining about JavaScript. I just want to download a file, see how fast it won't be. And this is one thing Internet Explorer 1 and 2 won't do. It'll, it'll start with this, but if I recall correctly, I don't think it actually ever gave me a, a progress bar. Internet Explorer 3 and above give you a progress bar, and this is an 81K file. It's going to take about five minutes according to this. The other trouble I had with Internet Explorer 1 is the downloads would just quit right at the end or just said some generic error that Microsoft just really just basically put up their hands and said, the heck with it. I don't want to do your work anymore today. We'll see how IE3 handles things. If you're looking to do this on your 386 based compact, Netscape Navigator 3 and Internet Explorer 3 both technically meet the requirements.
I'm impressed at how fast this is going for a 9.6 kilobit connection. I really am. And it downloaded it, so. So yeah, if you dare use Internet Explorer version 3.02, no earlier. Otherwise, you have a space leech. That's bad, especially on most of these models have 120 meg drives. Let's see if we can get to Google before we end this video. On IE1, it loaded a bunch of HTML gibberish. This one. While it's not pretty, let's see if we can search for something. I might regret that search. Trying to do something. It's not pretty, but it downloaded a picture. Now, will it anything be useful from this? It's still thinking about it, so I'll give it a minute. Oh, we got images. And just for reference, while it's doing that, I'll go to about Internet Explorer. It is deed 3.02. I think this one came off the Quicken 98 disc. So, if you need a special English version of Internet Explorer 3.02, I'm sure I can provide it somewhere for you to download. I'm impressed that I got anything at all out of this. Really happy, actually. All right, that counter doesn't appear to be moving, so it might be doing some other background task. But anywho, why did I do this? Well, for one, I just wanted to see one of these modems in action. I've came by dozens of these computers. I've worked on dozens of these computers. I've never once seen the modem actually do anything. The other big reason is to show you that there is a way to transfer files between these really old computers with a failed disk drive. And it, albeit it's a very slow method, this will, this will work just fine and you have less unsupported equipment on your network because the dial-up server is a modern Ubuntu box and really to each their own. And this also saves the aggravation of opening up a laptop that has brittle plastic in it like this one. So, pretty much the one and only purpose is 
transferring files back and forth between these vintage computers. Beyond that, I'm going to end this video. If you have questions, comments, concerns, constructive criticism, leave them in the comments section. Thank you for watching another wonderful vintage computer video.